No man is an island unto himself, so they say. This is BTC Gambler. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive look into the game Baccarat. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with the game Baccarat and there's some very unique features about this game that I want to bring to your attention. So really this is a call to action. So I'm going to go through a series of these videos and I've done a few already but this is just the start of it. This is going to be a real deep technical dive into the game Baccarat. I think you're going to like what I've done. There's something very special about this game. Yeah, and I want to show my findings with you. So when you go into the game, you know, it seems really, really simple. And in some ways it is really, really simple. And if we go into game info, it tells you the rules of the game. If we expand a little bit further on that, and we go into the description, it tells us that the house edge is 1.1%. And the payout, which is going to be really important, again is very, very simplistic. Plays out 1 to 1 on a player, 0.95 on a banker, and 8 to 1 on a tyre. But bear in mind, it does give you a stake back. But I have found some nuances that we can explore today. And trust me, I've gone really deep into this game. Now keep those numbers to mind. 1 to 1 on a player, 0 0.95 on a banker, 8 to 1 on a tyre. Because we're going to test some of those theories today. We're going to start off at the very, very basics. We are going to get a lot more advanced very quickly. You'll see, I'm running Node.js, JavaScript. I will come to that. But please stick around. Let's just verify everything. Because, you know, are the casino really telling us the truth here? Because there are various combinations of the bet. So you can basically bet on the player, or you can bet on a tie, or you can bet on banker. Or you can bet on player and banker at the same time. Or you can bet on player, tie and banker at the same time. Or you could do banker and tie. Or you can, you get the gist. Yeah, there are various permutations. So remember earlier it said it paid at 8 to 1. I'm going to show you where that doesn't quite work out. I have been in contact with the support about this and... Yeah, they just basically point me to this same location which I've just showed you. And let's test the theory. So if we bet on the player. Great. It said it pays out 1 to 1 on a player. So basically it pays out 2x simply because it pays back your stake amount. Now if we bet on the banker. That was lucky. <laughs> the both won. It paid out 1.95x. Not 0.95x. So it's just stake amount back plus 0.95 so I turn 0.1 into 0.95 all this is straightforward so far if I clear this and I just do a tie this may take a few tries before I get a tie. <laughs> really lucky it paid out nine times the bet amount which is basically eight times the bet plus your stake amount back all good all in line with the instructions as stated in the instructions it will pay back out the the multiplier as stated now let's get a little bit funky with this. If we do player and banker, something interesting happens. So there's only three possible outcomes. If you understand the mechanics of the way that the Baccarat games works, there can only be a maximum permutation of six draws of the card. I will go into much more detail on that later, but you see it's drawn five there. So if we bet on both, again we're just sticking to basics, you see, if we lose, in effect, there's no way to lose on this. Like, this is like an ideal way to wager. If you just want to wager, you know, you can go to backward and you can bet the same amount on player as you can on, on banker. So it pays out, as said, 0 0.95 plus the stake amount. So it would be 1.95, which actually in total of the total bet amount is 0 0.98 of the total bet amount. Because bear in mind we're doing a bet on the player and we're doing a bet on the banker and our total bet is 0 0.2. Now I'm hoping this is all making sense so far. Now if we just look at all the other permutations of that. So we're looking for a player win and we're looking for a tie. So here's a player win. The player win pays up 
basically 1x of your bet amount, which works out to be an exactly a draw, so it pays out. It says 1x there because it's 1x your total bet, but it's actually 2x from the player. Does that make sense? So you bet 0.2, you've got 0.2 back. So it's a draw. And if we look here, until we got a tie, a tie is exactly the same as a player bet. So you would think statistically, you know, you've you've got more chance of hitting player and tire than you have over banker. So it's a three to one ratio. Back rate is not a fair game actually. And the reason it pays out less on the banker is because it is slightly skewed for the banker to win more frequently than the player. And we can explore all of that much, much later on. When you're doing these individual bets, you're not really going to see any form of pattern. But when we start pushing these numbers up, you will see a pattern begin to emerge. Now let's do some really funky stuff like what happened if I put twice the bet amount on the player versus the banker? Anybody got an idea? It gets a little bit strange. It paid out 1.33x. So fundamentally that is, it paid out 2x in effect. It says 1x but it paid out 1x plus your stake amount back on the player hand it doesn't pay back what you paid played and you lose this so this would be doubled so four which in total works out to be 1.33 x of your total bet amount Does that makes sense because we bet three and we got four back which is 1.33 x now this is all looking good at the moment and this is exactly how well i want it to be now where it does get a little bit weird is if we bet on all three and what I'm going to show you is what happens when you get a tie. It doesn't stick to the rules. Now, one of you out there might better tell me I'm doing something really stupidly wrong, you know. And I happily admit when I, I like it when people prove to me that I've done something stupidly wrong because I learned something. But I can't work it out. If I bet on all three, I'll show you what happens. On a player win, it pays out 2x a bet amount. But because we bet 0 0.3, it paid up 0.67, so we made a loss. On a banker win, it's even worse. It's 0 0.6.5 amount because it paid up 0 0.95 plus the, the banker bet back, back. So it only paid back what I bet on the banker. It didn't pay back what I paid on a played on a tie or the banker. Now let's keep going until we get to a tie. Here. Something weird happens, and this is not documented. It pays out 8 to 1. 8 to 1. Plus your bet amount back. So that should have paid out 0.9. But it paid out 0.11. Which means it also paid back the banker's bet amount and the player's bet amount. I just think that is really obscure and that does not follow the rules and the guidelines as stated within the description of this game here tie eight to one it paid out eight to one it paid back the tie bet amount plus it also paid back the player amount and the banker amount i don't know if this is a bug <laughs> can it be exploited and this is why i'm putting it out there guys because like this is for you now this is all well and good but we're not here to discuss this today. So you may be interested to know this game is quite simplistic. And we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some of this game right now. In the murky worlds of the casino, if you've never been down here, when you go to Fairness and we talk about game events, here, do you know what it gives us so much information? Now here it's telling me of actually how it calculates at the game events. Now this is quite interesting. I want to draw your attention to this here because this is how it calculates at the each card in sequence using server seed, client seed and whatever nonce position it has. Having that information to hand is actually quite useful because one of the questions I wanted to know is could I recreate the, the entire game of Baccarat? 
could I actually recreate it? So I needed more information. So we had to de delve a bit deeper. So if we go into my bets and we look at one of the bet IDs, this is the one that we did just now. And if I expand the bit at the bottom where it says fairness, it's going to show me the server seed, albeit hashed, uh, the client seed and the nonce position. Now I cannot verify that, but what I can do, because that's a hash server seed, you know, if you could verify a hash server seed, you could basically beat the casino because you would just move the nonce position on a position and you can calculate what the next result is going to be. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to populate out with a server seed and a client seed because it would tell you how I was able to decipher this game. So I've got one done here. And when we put in the server seed, the client seed and the nonce position, it tells me the result of the game. But more importantly, it gives me the formula it used to calculate each of the hands. And it's from that that was able to recreate the game. This is where the video starts to get interesting. Please note that everything I do is is up is open source. It's on GitHub. I will provide the link. It's here, but it will be available free to everybody. I'm not looking for anything. And this particular file that we're playing here is called Baccarat Simulator. Now I have also written a version that works with my Alphaverse platform, which we'll come to that. But that did mean that to map out all of the API settings. And so there's this stake API.mjs file is basically a lot of the if we go into that, go into that. I've mapped out a lot of the API functions in here. So in here I had to map out the game backer app. Yeah, so it, these are all of the settings that I needed in the stake API.mjs file. This is purely for Alphaverse, so so you can see slowly getting my way through the games you know the ones that I've done is is back right now Limbo has been done Dragon Tower has been done Dice has been done Diamond Poker has been done and there is one more Blackjack oh and Roulette Roulette's been done quite a while back but Blackjack's also not finalized yet but close to being completed but we're going to be talking about this file. Now this was a standalone uh, file that you could just run using Node.js. You could just download Node.js. You need crypto, so you'd have to run npm install crypto, and then you could just run node backrat simulator.mjs, and you can run this file independent. Let me bring this up in Visual Studio because this is much easier to see. Here we are. Now I've tried to make this as really, really easy as I possibly can. Please don't be afraid of this coding. This coding, as I said, you know, like you can see from the game, it's such a simple game. You know, we just state here how much we're going to put on the banker, how much we're going to play put on the player, and then how much we're going to put on a tie. Simple as that. Simple as that. In the comments of the code, it says here the gameplay verbals try new ideas, and please try new ideas. <laughs> This is going to allow you to very safely test ideas. You know, I see my role is I learn and then I teach. And that's my role in life. And I'm hoping you'll find this useful because it's going to get start to get really, really interesting soon because this this allowed me to test new ideas, a new concept. Because you know, one of the things I want to talk to you today is I've got a new form of gambling. I haven't come across it anywhere else on the internet and even did a full thorough search and I even asked ChatGPT has anybody come up with this and it seems to be unique and maybe somebody out there already doing this if you have let me know congratulations it's interesting way of gambling but I don't want to waffle on too much right like this game is like really really simple to code for you just state how much so here I've set a base bet and I've set the start balance because this is all simulated bet of the game. Right at the bottom, this section here is like the do bet function. And I've left some comments in there for examples of where you may or may not want to try things. Like for example, you can use the verbal previous bet, next bet. You could decide what to do on a win, what to do when it ties, and what to do when it's lose, lose them. But I came up with this new idea, and it is called progressive recovery betting so PRB 
progressive recovery betting. I have not come across this idea. And what progressive recovery betting is, is that instead of doing martingale, which is like the cause of all evils, <laughs> I toyed around with the idea of only adding 20% on every loss, only whilst you're at a loss. So what it does, it flat bets. It flat bets on the base bet amount. And then when it the profit is below zero, so we can see here, if profit is greater than or higher than zero, then it goes back to the base bet. And it sets the banker bet, and it sets the player bet. And this is all fully customizable. You can change this. Don't be afraid to change this. You want to put some crazy numbers in to test it. You're not doing any damage. You're not doing any real betting. Okay, if the profit isn't greater than zero it has to be below zero so it means we just use an else statement and this is where i'm adding 20 percent so i'm saying the next bet equals the next bet plus next bet times 20 percent so basically we're adding 20 percent on every single time on the next bet let me show you what this looks like but before we do that i mean the number of bets that you're going to run i've put done the maths already i've made it easy for you so I found on average, when I'm running Alphaverse, let me quickly show you that. You can see on each account, I'm getting over 10,000 bets an hour. So at the moment, I'm at 1.77 million bets per hour. But I say on average, we're going to be 10,000 bets an hour. And that's what I've based the maths on. So the number of bets... So if we wanted to represent one day's worth of gambling, for example, it's 240,000 bets. So the numbers I put here as examples, if you want to represent one day's worth of uh, playing, just copy that, it's 240,000. Yeah, just copy and paste that. And if you want to represent one week, it's 1.68 million. And if you want to represent one month, that's 7.2 million. And if you really want to go crazy, hellbent, and you really want to test something, and a, an entire year's run would be 86,400,000. You could just copy and paste those into there, and you'll see in a minute. It sounds crazy, but it's not. It really isn't. You know, when you're doing like 1 1.7, 1.8 million bits per hour, these are the lengths that you need to go to in terms of testing. Like I said, I learn, and then I teach. <laughs> and the last thing I want is for you guys to go and follow what I do and then lose money so test trial test modify come up with your own ideas and this is really what the call to action is because one of you out there will have an amazing idea but you can test it here now very very safely and I want you to share what you do you know that's all I ask just share your knowledge i share my knowledge you share your knowledge and we are here together we are a community of like-minded people and i tend to attract like-minded people for those that are interested the game has been fully mapped out i have literally recreated the game baccarat from the card values to where how it calculates out the bite to flow as specified and from the server seed the client seed and the nonce position, I'm able to get the raw float. So if I can get the raw float from the client seed, server seed and the nonce position, I could then calculate each of the bet outcomes using the same formula. You see this bit how I said that, that bit's going to be earlier, important earlier? That's the bit in the code that's critical because this I can then calculate that figure out and that will return a figure and it does show you here the layer of the cards and how the float calculates out which card to pick. So I just copied it. I couldn't use the symbols. JavaScript didn't like the symbols, so basically I had to change those to D for diamond, H for hearts, S for spades, and C for clubs. And you'll see that in the code. It's identical, guys. It's identical. So I've mapped out, and from the index, I can sort of then individually count, uh, calculate each of the cards and in sequence. And the core skill here was knowing actually how the game have actually played out. And there were certain rules within it. And I had to do some research around that because it deals with player card, 
deal a card two first, play a card two second, and then it decides based on the outcome of the player card whether it needs to deal a third card. And there was a whole bunch of logic that needed to be mapped out. Guys, I hope you appreciate the work I go to here because this takes me a long, long, long time to do. And I'm very conscious and aware that my uh, view count on my videos is it's diabolically low. Ever since my YouTube channel has been deleted and I created a new one, I've gone from like 30,000 views a video down to 100 now. I'd say it's very, very disheartening. So one of the things you could do for me, guys, is please, if you continue, if you want me to continue to produce this type of content and these types of videos, the most the important thing you could do is to incentivize me to do that and that's simply like the video please comment on it if you want to and also you could share it you could add it to a playlist yeah and subscribe to the channel uh, that's all i ask that is all i ask if i see my numbers go up then i'm motivated to do this because this is just one of many games you know my, i have a plan i would like to do all of the originals games like this for you so all of the logic game of the game has been coded into this script i and i have tested it this has taken me many days to put together and it's taken extensive amount of testing so i suppose really the, the key thing here is to stop waffling on is to show you what well, i put side by side i've got a node.js window open here locally on my machine and i've got the visual studio code here because i wanted to show you side by side so I'm doing some testing on this progressive recovery betting, PRB, this new idea, this new concept, because there was no other way to, for me to test this. And as you know, guys, everything I do, I always back it up with the maths. And the maths is here. I created a brand new spreadsheet for this. It's for the Baccarat calculator. And in here, I put your start balance, what the base bet multiplier is, which works out the base bet and then here along the validity checker we then keep a track and it will calculate what the max loss streak is and the odds and the probability of all of this so now this spreadsheet has been designed to work with alphaverse alphaverse is where you can run hundreds and hundreds of bots and then each of them have a shared recovery part and when it busts it will automatically tip the funds across so the spreadsheet has a calculation in there of what the recovery pot size should be. And that's what takes us up into these very extreme safe areas. But let's get back to, to here. So I'm running a base bet of 0 0.002. Only betting on the banker. If it wins, I'm not doing anything. If it ties, I'm not doing anything. And if it loses, I'm not doing anything. However, I'm measuring the profit. And if the profit is less than zero, it continuously adds 20% onto the next bet until it gets back into profit and it flat bets. So let's look at that. Let's run it. Let's run it here. So this is fully replicating the game. Yeah. And more importantly, every one of these bets is it exactly copying the mechanism of the casino game and it is truly 100% provably fair. It's the same server seed, client seed, moving on a nonce position, provably fair system that the casino use and I've fully replicated it and we can prove that. Let, let me just stop this. Okay, what I've done, I've taken off the server seed here with there's the server seed and these are randomly generated every time you start the game I've taken the client seed and i put that here and i've taken the nonce position and i put that there so the nonce position is here nine two seven six nine four nine two seven six nine four so we can say from that server seed client seed nonce position that the player won the game result was player win and when we check that unprovably fair that was player win now if we go down to the previous bet which we, we we move down a bit we know that should say banker win so if we go down a bit it is banker win if we go down one more it should be player win it is player win and it should be banker win player win player win 
banker win, player win, player win. You can play with this to your heart's content, guys. I have tested this to the nth degree and it's 100% provably fair. So this is actually still running. Now this is running in what we call debug mode. So if we go back into Visual Studio Code, I put the debug mode in there, but simply so that you can just verify things if you're testing ideas out, because you'll see in a moment, moment this thing runs so fast, it's impossible to do any, do any diagnostics. So this debug mode in there is to help you to validate that you're doing all of the right things. It's right here, guys. Just if you, I'm going to set this to false. And I'm just going to save that. And in fact, this runs so, so fast. You know, these bets, um, I'm at the moment, I'm representing one week's worth of running here. 1.68 million bets. This runs so fast that I literally have to show the bet results every 100,000 bets because it just flies off the screen. So if I stop this, this is going to run exactly the same code, but this time with debug mode switched off. And it's, I think, how you're going to run most of it. And it gets very, very interesting. Look at this. We're getting 300,000 bets a second. Yeah, this instance we bust. There is a check in there to see if the next bet is greater than the balance and it busts out. But that's fine. We can test, test ideas. I can rerun it. And you see how quick it would go through 1.68 million bets at that sort of bet rate. This time it succeeded and it gives us a total bet summary and it gives us really interesting data that we can work with. Right, the total number of bets, I mean that's all well and good. The total amount of profit which is quite low, the amount of wages, I'm going to come back to that in a moment because that's what I've been working towards, I've been trying to find a solution to wage of $1,000 per week at low risk. And this is what progressive recovery betting is all about. Yeah, it shows you what the worst loss streak was. It tells you the number of times that the banker won. What the biggest streak of wins for the banker was. Which is, a lot of people play back out that way. They look for streaks. It tells you the number of times the players won. And... The biggest win streak for the player and a number of times it's well, it tied and a number of times that uh, there was a tied streak. You know, do you remember I said to you earlier that the game is slightly skewed towards the player and we will look at that later? We can clearly see it here. Every single time I've run, run, played this, the banker wins exceeds the player wins. It doesn't make sense. I'm not even sure how they skew it. But it's definitely skewed. And this is the exact reason when I play it. I always play on the banker and not on a player. Because there is a very slight edge playing over with the banker than there is over the player. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So what I encourage is for you guys to play around with it. Experiment with it. Don't be frightened of breaking it. You can just re-put it back down again. It's immensely fast and quick. It allows you to test ideas en masse. So here we've just done a week's, let's do a month. Let's see how quick it runs a month. So I've just changed it to 7.2 million bets. Just watch this. I always say, if you've got a strategy that can last a month, then it's a good strategy. Already we're at about 40%. It does show a progress indicator. It's a bit fast to see, but it's 55%, 63%. Done. That was 7,200,000 bets. That represents an entire month's worth of running in a few seconds. Staggering speed. 300,000 bets per second. That is the beauty of running Node.js. Knowing 100% that this is fully replicating the game and is 100% proved to be fair. Feel free to examine this and change it. And when you do go over to GitHub... And the link to the GitHub will be in the description of this video. Feel free to like, just download it. But I've also put in here the version that also works on <clears throat> Alphaverse. So this is P3 
PRB, progressive recovery betting, as I mentioned before. But this is to run on the Alphaverse platform. And if you do want to run this, you will need to update your stake API.mjs file. So if you get stuck with that, you know, just reach out to me in Discord. There will be a link in Discord to the Discord. Please come along and join it. You're going to find a bunch of like-minded people there. I hope this video has been useful. I'm going to end it here and I'll speak to you all again very, very soon.